At this time, I'm very pleased to introduce Nancy Lublin, who will give our commencement address. A little later on in the ceremony, Ms. Lublin will receive an honorary doctoral degree from Iona College. A full citation of Nancy Lublin's life and accomplishments can be found at the back of your commencement program. I am pleased to present to you Nancy Lublin. Thank you so much, uh, President Nyer, Board of Trustees, faculty, class of 2018. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm so honored to be with you. And somewhere in heaven, my grandparents are playing bridge and telling everyone that there's finally a doctor in the family. <laughs> Before I address the class of 2018, would everyone in the back who is a parent please stand up? of a graduate. If you were a parent of a graduate, please stand up. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your support and tell you that I think tuition is over. Is that right? You're done? Um, and I just want to note, there are two questions that you parents are probably all wondering today. One of them is, what are they wearing under those kilts? <laughs> and the other question is, OK, graduate, what are you going to do next? And I want to suggest to you, parents, that neither of those questions is appropriate today. <laughs> so thank you so much. Have a seat, because now it's all about these people. Class of 2018, we have never met. And um, we might never meet again. You probably didn't know my name before today, and you're still uncertain how to pronounce my last name. That's OK. And I don't really know any of your names. And yet I'm here at the microphone at one of the biggest moments of your life. Crisis text line is much the same way. It's strangers counseling strangers in the most important, sometimes dire, moments of their life. I founded Crisis Text Line in 2011 when a text message changed my life. At the time, I was the CEO of DoSomething.org, the largest organization for young people in America. With six million members, it's bigger than the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts combined. I'll also add it's bigger than the NRA, but I'm not going to do any other politics today. <laughs> um, uh, DoSomething.org grew so big because we communicated with young people the way they communicate, by text. That was the secret to growing so big. Be in people's pockets. Be in their hands. DoSomething.org still sends text messages every week to young people who care about social change, encouraging them to run campaigns about gun violence, hunger, bullying. And every week, hundreds of thousands of kids participate in these campaigns. It's, it's beautiful. Um, they collect millions of pairs of jeans for homeless youth, or hundreds of thousands of jars of peanut butter to fill food, food pantries, or tens of thousands of handmade cards for senior citizens. Young people serving, young people caring. But every week, DoSomething.org also receives a couple of dozen messages that are out of flow, having nothing to do with jeans or peanut butter or caring about seniors. Instead, young people send in messages of personal pain about being scared to go to school or worrying about a friend's drug addiction. And we triage those messages by responding with a hotline number or saying, maybe talk to your school principal or your mom. And then one day, I was at my desk. And an employee brought in a piece of paper and just laid it down in front of me. And she said, I don't know what to do with this message. It said, he won't stop raping me. It's my dad. He told me not to tell anyone. And the letters, are you there? I must have read that four times over, like, what? Um, I couldn't believe this was real, that someone was so desperate, so alone, that they reached out to a stranger this way by text. We sent the phone number for Rain, 
the terrific organization that focuses on rape and incest, and I came to work the next day and asked if we heard back from that texter. Nothing. So we sent the number again. Still nothing. And the truth is that over the last seven years, I've personally tried to call and text that number many times. No answer. Nothing. I don't know if her dad found the phone. I don't know if it was a burner phone. I don't know if she is dead or alive. And I don't even know if the texter was female. And so that texter, they're my inspiration. If, purple, if people prefer to text, then we'd launch a helpline by text. And so that's what I did. We launched quietly on August 1st, 2013, and in just four months, we were in all 295 area codes in the United States. Organic growth, massive organic growth. For those of you who track things like this, that's faster than when Facebook launched geographically. Why? Because it turns out that strangers, talking to strangers in their darkest moments, that works. It's private, it's anonymous, it's fast, it's mobile, it's in your pocket. Now, almost five years since launch, we've processed about 70 million messages, and our users turn out to be young, poor, and diverse. 75% of our users are under the age of 25. If you take the nation's poorest 10% by area code, they're using 19% of our volumes. So that means we double over-index the poorest people in America. And almost 19% of our users identify as Hispanic and 11% black. And they reach out to us for relationship advice when going through a painful breakup or a fight with a family member. They text in deep, dark grief after losing a parent. And they message us while having that panic attack, feeling overwhelming anxiety in the face of a bill they can't pay or another news story about another shooting. Does any of this sound familiar? Here I am, a stranger, and I want you to know that I see how hard you fought to get here today. So um, indulge me. If there was a moment, graduates, when you thought you might not get here to this moment, please stand up and stay standing. If there was ever an exam or paper that you thought might sink you, an exam or paper that you, stand up. If there was a breakup that crushed your spirit or gave you anxiety or depression, please stand up. If you had a family member experience illness or you lost a family member during your time at Iona, please stand up. And lastly, if the expense of college ever felt like a little bit too much for you or your family and you questioned the value of being here, please stand up. I think I see the entire class of 2018 standing. And what I want to say to you is, you are here. And you are stronger than you know. OK, you can sit down now. Today, you will receive a piece of paper. And chances are, you're going to misplace it. <laughs> you're wearing a weird gown and a funny hat that you might never see again. But this inner strength, the triumph of this moment, what it took to get here, nobody can ever take that away. Now, I want you to indulge me in one more exercise. Take off your shoes. Just the graduates, no one wants to see your feet, parents. Graduates, take off your shoes. For real, take off your shoes, look at your feet, and look at the feet of the person next to you. Everybody has funky feet, come on, take off those shoes, look at those feet. Some of you are in dire need of a pedicure. Some of you have kind of stinky feet and funky feet. Some of you got stubby toes. Maybe there are some cute feet. I don't know. But God gave you those feet. You were born with those feet. They are calloused. You jump on those feet. You run on those feet. Those feet walked you in here, and they will walk you out. You will have them forever. Those feet worked hard. 
They are weird and amazing. I swear I don't have a foot fetish. I really don't. It's not that creepy. I just want you to remember, you were given those feet when you were born, and they've taken you far, and they will walk you out of here into a weird and amazing world. Today, you get this diploma. That's the gift today. And it will also be with you forever in this weird and amazing world. You got this. It was an honor to be with you here in that moment. Congratulations, class of 2018.